Hi guys, so today I'm going to show you how I set up an aquarium for newts. This is a 36 by 15 by 12 aquarium. I purchased this tank from my local aquatic store, which is Cheshire Aquatics, based at Blakemere Craft Centre, Sandyway. The price you can see there is $79.99. They don't actually always carry these tanks in stock, so shout out to Cheshire Aquatics for ordering this in specially for me. Now something else that I've purchased today is this thing which I believe is called a PVC external angle. I think that's what it says on the label anyway. I bought this today from Wix DIY Centre. I think it was £8 and what this is going to be used for is creating an overhang on the aquarium. So after measuring it to size it can quite easily be cut with a saw and what I do is I cut four lengths two which are exactly the same length as the tank, which as I say is 36 inches in this case. And then a second two pieces are cut and these are made just a little bit shorter than the depth of the tank so that they'll slot in between the two longer pieces. The PVC angle is placed along the top edge of the aquarium and then I take some Gorilla Tape. Then taking care to line it up carefully, with one single piece, I go right the way around the rim of the tank, securing the PVC angle uh, to the top of the aquarium. Obviously, I've speeded this footage up a little bit because I do go quite slowly and carefully, making sure that there's no gaps between the pieces of PVC angle and ensuring that the tape's nice and straight and it's a nice, neat job as well. Just to make it nice and neat as well, you can see that I start and end this piece of tape on the side of the aquarium, not on the front, so the join is not visible when finished. Then turning my attention to the top of the aquarium, I take the Gorilla Tape again and go across the top of the PVC angle. The tape is a little wider than the PVC angle actually, so we're going to make the overhang a little bit larger than the actual uh, PVC angle. Uh, what we're going to be left with ultimately is a two inch overhang, which is enough to stop the newts from climbing up the sides and escaping. The edges are just trimmed off with scissors, nice and neat. And that's one side done. So I've then done the other side and then I go across the length of the tank doing the same thing. Now at this point I'd just like to add a bit of a disclaimer about the overhangs and that is that I prefer overhangs to lids. Aquarium lids are generally designed for fish, not for newts, so they're not really meant to be completely escape proof. There are often small gaps around the edges and the corners which is where newts are most likely to escape so that's why I just pay my attention to these areas. They can't escape from the middle and I found the overhangs to be very effective. However, the species that I'm keeping are mainly crested and marbled newts. They're heavily bodied animals that are not particularly good at climbing, apart from the small juveniles. So with smaller species, such as alpine newts, you may want to use something more secure. I have been told that alpine newts are capable of escaping overhangs. I've never seen it for myself, but I have heard other people say that. So uh, you may want to use something more secure for alpine newts and other small species. And I can't express how important it is that your aquariums are completely escape proof, both for the welfare of the animals that you're keeping and for the sake of your native wildlife. Now I've just come outside and I'm going to prepare my substrate and I'm using here a mixture of two things. Firstly is Aquarium Gravel by Hugo Kamishi, which is the same make as the tank that I'm using actually, which I got from uh, the same aquatic store. And I prepare the gravel simply by washing it out with water from a hose outside. It's quite good gravel this actually, there's not a great deal of dust in there so it only takes a couple of minutes to rinse it through and then it'll be ready to go into the aquarium. I then prepare the sand which as I say, it's children's play pit sand. You can see the packaging there in the background. This uh, particular brand is Tarmac, and that's washed in the same way. I've got a mixture of sand and gravel in the tank now, and I'm starting to fill it with water. The water which I use for my newts is collected rainwater. You can use tap water if you prefer, but this shouldn't be used straight from the tap. It needs to be conditioned with a dechlorinator and water conditioner before you use it. I'm also going to use a light in this aquarium. And here I'm using an Ecomax LED by Interpet. 
This is the 90 centimeter model, which was 69.99. I purchased this from Ripples Waterlife at Bridgemere Garden Center, Cheshire. Now these lights come with clips. We have two options for attaching them, either suckers or screws. In this case, I've used the screws to attach the clips to the wooden shelf on the aquarium above. Artificial lighting is actually optional when keeping newts. They don't need a particularly bright light. If you want to keep live plants in the tank though, then the light is more important for the plants than for the newts. Some of my newt tanks are placed in indirect sunlight from a window. Um, of course, you need to be careful that they don't get too much direct light, which can cause algal blooms as well as possibly overheating the aquarium. But a little bit of indirect light from a window uh, is a really good idea for newts, I believe. Newts are seasonal breeders and they're triggered to breed not only by the changes in temperature, but also by changes in the photo period. So access to natural daylight can really help to trigger their natural reproductive cycle. When using artificial light, I try to replicate the natural photo period for that time of year. So increasing the period of time that the lights are left on over the summer months and reducing it over the winter. Now I'm furnishing the aquarium and here I'm actually using pieces of broken brick, which might not be particularly beautiful to look at, but they do have the advantage of having a nice curvature to them, which gives the newts a nice little hiding place underneath. I then add some live plants. I like to use floating plants for my newts uh, because this actually gives the newts somewhere to rest at the water surface, holding onto the floating plants. And then I also add a floating piece of cork bark, which gives them somewhere additional to rest actually out of the water. Some keepers choose to petition their tanks with glass and create a natural land area, but a floating piece of bark is the simplest way of giving them somewhere to rest. Now I've given the tank 24 hours to settle in, that's allowed any dust or anything from the sand and gravel to settle down, and now I can put my newts in. These newts have been kept in an aquarium in the same room, so the temperature is the same, I don't need to float them, I can put them straight in. And these are Balkan crested newts, Tritorus Ivan Bereshi. These are juveniles from this year, so they're still quite small, so I'm able to put quite a few newts in. Uh, I'm actually putting 16 young newts into this aquarium. When they're adult and they're much larger, I would perhaps house two or three pairs of newts in an aquarium of this size. So as you can see, it's an incredibly simple setup, but hopefully that's helped so it can give you some ideas on how you can house your own newts. You'll notice that I don't use any filtration or aeration or anything like that. And this is what works particularly well for me for Tritorus species for the crested and marbled newts. If you're keeping other species of newts, you may find that they benefit from some agitation of the water from an air stone or something like that. You may also like to add a small sponge filter or perhaps an under gravel filter if you don't feel that the water changes are sufficient for keeping on top of the waste from the animals. So that's more or less everything for my incredibly simple setups. Just the last thing is to add a bit of labelling for what's contained in the tank and a little label with my own logo on on the other side. Um, but that is the aquarium complete. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and that it's been of some use. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button now. That won't cost you a penny and I don't even make a penny from these videos. If you like, comment and subscribe, that just helps to get my content seen by more people on YouTube. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.